Don't throw money at people. That is not, that is cheap. That is baseline. That is what everybody who's a corporate type of PT practice is going to do because they don't have anything else they can do. They don't have that unique company culture that a PT private practice has. They don't have that unique family feel and family appeal. They, they, they can't just be as nimble as you can. So everybody, welcome back to our part two of our three-part series on recruiting. As a physical therapist for the last 30 years, I have had practice of the year and I had a staffing company and I have done a ton of hiring. I've also been in out of over 500 offices across the country. So I want to share with you some of the successful actions I've seen in other clinics that are practicing in the top 10%. That's what we're all about is just sharing with you the proven successful strategies that are going to benefit you greatest and what you're trying to achieve in your practice. So as we all know we are in a supply chain shortage in terms of labor but right now I want you to think with the advancing therapist this therapist is typically somebody who's four to eight years out four to nine years out the veteran therapist is nine ten plus years out right the new grad is three or less the advancing therapist I always feel no matter what you're doing whether you're in sales whether you're in manufacturing or whatever know your audience know your crowd know your customers know what they most need and want and target that so starting with your ad what does an advancing therapist most need and want well they've been out of school four years plus they're not quite at their 10 year anniversary it's kind of in the title they want advancement they want increased opportunity chances are they're married they have kids kids are growing they're saving for college retirement you know these financial pressures new house second home who knows these things start to happen. See, in the new grad world, those people from ages 24 to 34, they may switch jobs, you know, four times. But as you get them in that journey, you want to get them locked into your job for the long haul, long term, less of a revolving door. Every single time you have turnover, it's about $23,000 to replace another full-time therapist through lost income and lost production and increased cost of bringing somebody else on. We want to avoid that, avoid that as much as possible. And we're going to start off by hiring right the first time. If we have an advancing therapist, we want to add the read with a question. Hey, are you the next senior therapist who's ready for be ready for advancement and becoming our premier mentor to our new grads coming into our practice? Are you the type of therapist who loves learning, loves teaching, and loves growing and expanding your skill set? Because we have the environment for you. Here's how. And they're interested. You, you the question, it's spiked their interest. Don't throw money at people. That is not, that is cheap. That is baseline. That is what everybody who's a corporate type of PT practice is going to do because they don't have anything else they can do. They don't have that unique company culture that a PT private practice has. They don't have that unique family feel and family appeal. They, they, they can't just be as nimble as you can. So let them know in the ad what you're all about, what your philosophy is. An advancing therapist is looking for ways and means to a, a, make more money, B, take on more responsibility, and C, feel more part of the machine, feel more part, more accountable to the success of the overall group. So make sure you're retaining this person by forwarding those things. A, how could you help them get, make more money? Give them opportunities to be a clinical director. Say, hey, we have a mentorship program where we'll apprentice you for the next three to six months and teach you all the skills of middle management. And therefore, you're going to have the talents of conflict resolution, enhanced communication, how to bring about agreement, all these artful things, reading body language, you know, how to um, actually manage by statistics. What are the 64 key statistics? Start teaching them data points in the middle management level. They don't need to see a PNL and a balance sheet, but show them the 64 key statistics. Teach them what income, you know, GI gross income divided by staff means. How is that a quality marker? Maybe you want to show them what the prescribed frequency ratio is. What what degree of uh, incoming patients each and every week are three times a week? What percentage are two times a week? What percentage are one time a week? And what should that be? Or what is the appropriate clinician to admin ratio? Start teaching these advanced skills, retention, 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 because people are learning things and they're on that learning curve and it makes work exciting. I, I, I'm learning something new this quarter that I didn't know. I'm, I'm working through these statistics and I'm learning how I can influence them, how I can be an influencer within this practice. That's empowering. That's making them feel validated and very important. Make them a part of that process. How can you do that? Well, one of the ways we teach it is get them involved in the business strategic planning each and every year. Get them involved in the quarterly review planning. Where are we? Are we on track? Not on track? What can we do better? What should we do different? What did we learn from last quarter that we don't want to do this quarter? 
Get them in those conversations. Treat them as the most valuable and important person that they are. You need to make sure that in today's day and age, people feel engaged, engaged in the process. So make it fun, make it exciting, create that company culture where they can have and make decisions that impact the long-term operations of this company. Advancing therapists, that's what they want. But of course, training first, right? So we've we, we found ways to get them some increased compensation by moving up as either a senior training therapist, a senior mentor, or a supervisor over the tax, or a clinical director. Those are some interesting um, opportunities for people to move into. Maybe they can even become your compliance officer or your qual officer. Definitely a bump up in pay and the base pay for that. Get them on pay for performance for their clinical time. Give them a slight increase in their base pay for their administrative oversight and their reaching for the stars, if you will. So you're encouraging that, right? Then, as the advancing therapist, make sure that they have a title that goes with it. Make sure that people come to them and they are a little bit of the rainmaker and putting out fires and offering solutions and contributing to new standard operating procedures. How do you do that? You do that by, like I said before, getting them involved in the business strategic plan. You do that by having them run the weekly management action plan. They run a weekly management action plan based on a three-week trend, and then they say, hey, based on how we're trending, this is what I'm going to do for the next week to make a positive effect or positive influence in the practice as a whole. Because the middle manager is concerned about the metrics of the group, metrics of the organization, but the way they get the metrics going up or the KPIs, key performance indicators going up, is they get the individual statistics going up. And that's where the grooming, the mentorship, the the having personnel management skills really comes in and you're investing in them. They're not paying for that. You paid for that learning management system. Maybe you went through Mega Academy with us. You got that middle manager executive training program, that clinical director program. They learned a lot from that role play and those assignments, those quizzes, those 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 that video learning, that web-based learning that we have. And now they're practicing that inside your practice and all of your staff is the benefit of that. What happens here is they become vested. They, they, they get more interested in their long-term longevity here because it's usually not as fun down the street to be working somewhere else. Now, now in the advancing therapist world, whereas with the new grad, not so important, you can start putting in retirement plans. You can put in long-term disability, short-term disability. You can start offering some of these additional bonus plans in addition to the pay for performance that they can harvest and take advantage of. Maybe you have a Christmas allocation program where each year, the beginning of the year, you start allocating $20 a paycheck into a side account for them that they can cash in in November for Christmas presents or or holiday presents, whatever holiday you sub- celebrate, however that goes. It's great because it's an added benefit that you can work through your bookkeeping that just allows them to side shuffle some funds and all of a sudden it accrues and they got a bunch of money ready during the holidays. So things like that are benefiting them, not necessarily the practice. Give more in value than you ever expect in return. If you create that company culture, you will have the staff retention. Those middle managers will not move anywhere else because they're doing way better with you than they'll ever be doing anywhere else. These are the people that could eventually become junior partners if you so choose to go in that direction near the later part of your career. Not a big partnership fan early on at all, but later on when they get vested and they get a little piece of the pie, three, four, five percent, hey, that's good. That's a good long-term program for them. They're winning as a, as a clinician. They're winning as a middle manager. Now they're winning at a higher level as a junior partner. And you've created that for them. You've afforded them that opportunity. They had, didn't have to mortgage their house. They didn't have to take a big business loan. They don't have a, a lot of stress on themselves. They're actually doing it through some degree of sweat equity, if you will. And then, of course, if you get even bigger, they can buy shares and you can do that too. So anyways, not to get off on all that stuff, but I want you to make sure that you're communicating in your interview process and your recruiting process that this is what you believe in. This is what they should aspire to. These are the opportunities you have to bestow on them. Do that early on. Let them have a future. Put the carrot there for them to go after. If you keep that close to your chest, then you're not very transparent and lack of transparency is lack of trust. Transparency breeds trust. Be that person, be that type of owner, create that kind of culture. People will stay with you a long time and you're going to avoid that revolving front door. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed part two, how to recruit and retain the advancing therapist. I wish you the best.